Happy Monday, guys. It's Andrew from Uncut. And I'm Colby, and this is Uncut BTS, where we take you behind the scenes of our podcasts, our businesses, and our lives. Um, how are you, Andrew? Good, good. I literally just got off the plane from Maui. We were there for, since last Thursday, kind of just relaxing, hanging out, and then had a wedding yesterday. My first Indian wedding ever. Oh, how was that? It looked beautiful. It was so much fun. It's so colorful, so yeah. much energy. Um, you know, the barat, like the ceremony before the ceremony was so cool, like super, I don't know, it's so cool to see everyone dancing and vibing and I don't know, all the colors, everything is super cool and I, I hope we get to do more. Indian weddings are so over the top, I love it. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't done any before, but like that was amazing. Like I, I, I felt the energy, I still feel the energy, it's it's amazing. I remember shooting one in LA actually, like oh, crazy. a long time ago, and they went all out. They even had a parade. Like I think yeah. that's actually part of their thing, where they like traditionally, I think it's like with elephants. But yeah, yeah, yeah. When they had horses, but yeah. um, they parade paraded through the streets of LA, and I was like, "What am I filming yeah, right now?" <laughs> yeah, so that's much that's going that on. like b- Barat. Yeah, if I'm pronouncing it correct, but I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I know. And then the henna, did they? Take- yeah. Every- yep. Yep. And all the guests had henna. Even like the bride's henna was super sick. All her jewelry, her traditional dress. Like, it, was, it was a great day. Yeah. It nice. it it's beautiful. so interesting to see how different cultures celebrate, mm-hmm. you know, the wedding, weddings, how they have weddings. I mean, because like even like with a lot of Asian weddings, they'll do like the tea ceremony. And sometimes that's really over the top, too. <laughs> Did, did we talk about that in another episode where we should just be professional wedding guests going around <laughs> the world, experiencing different cultures? Is that I us? know you said that you wanted to do that and then like film too, or just be a guest. I think we just be a guest and we get filmed. <laughs> and you know, we um, we enjoy all the different cultures and everything. We're, I want to put that out in the universe. Someone's going to reach out to do that show and we'll host I mean, it. <laughs> what are you going to bring to the table? You can't just like be a guest. You need to like really offer something we'll be a guest i'm just kidding we'll figure something out <laughs> hire me to be your friend and wedding guest. yeah yeah we'll be professional wedding guests and we'll create content but then and we'll, see that. well but then yeah, we'll yeah. do it like with our phones not like with gear and like online. exactly exactly yeah. more 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 raw organic uh-huh. and then we'll we'll curate your photo video team there we go <laughs> yeah. we'll be your photo video directors yeah consultants yeah directors yeah. Uh, how was your weekend? Um, it was good. I had a family reunion um, down in Kau, so nice. it was really. You fun. brought out the red book. Brought out that red book. Yep, it's so funny. we were, there's maybe like I don't know, two hundred people like who like came and went. There's just so many family I'm still meeting. I probably knew not even a fourth of the people who were there. I saw your stories and like everything looked great like amazing like the food <laughs> yeah there's so yeah. you're I didn't like even get, country like, too many shots of the food yeah i like was feeling bad because with such a big family like i really haven't kept in touch with everybody mm-hmm. like i have cousins like shout out to my cousins monica and Sazen. like they i feel like they know everybody so i was just like hanging around with them so that they could like introduce they're me. like the mayor of your bloodline they, yeah, like, yeah. because you know, <laughs> yeah. there's so many. It's like basically my grandpa, so my dad's dad, my yeah. grandpa had like seven siblings, and like each of their siblings, it's like we're all celebrating together. But then it's like, okay, who's your grandpa? Okay, Uncle Sonny, and then like mm-hmm. your dad. So whenever I'd meet a cousin, they'd be like, okay, what's your line? <laughs> um, you need you need to make like shirts with like grandfather father yeah no 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 just so you can identify (laughs) yeah that's a really good idea everyone in blue shirts their grandpa and uncle or grandpa sunny Uh yeah Yeah. yeah. next one hey i can curate your family party too let me know (laughs) i was kidding (laughs) but have you like are you really close with your family like are, are they mostly here so my dad's side you know like over the years Everyone's from Vietnam originally, my parents are immigrants. And then, you know, over the years, we sponsored, like, my my dad's family. And they're kind of mm-hmm. scattered around the mainland. Um, my mom's family is all in Vietnam. And, like, you know, mm-hmm. I, 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 growing up, I, I went every year. So I was, like, really close to them. 
thank you to Facebook, we're still all connected. So, oh. you know, it's seeing it. My, my parents are actually there right now for my cousin's wedding. And it's cool to see, you know, like, I, I know, like, the immediate, like, first family. But, like, it's cool to meet, like, yeah, like you said, like, those, like, that extended, the cousins and, yeah. like, and, and all that. So, it's, it's, I haven't seen them in a minute. I miss them. Can't wait to go back. Yeah. But it, it's, yeah. We don't yeah. have, like, those big family unions. Yeah, and it takes time. Like, I was talking with one cousin, and I was like, how are you? Like, you're so good. You know all the cousins. And she's like, well, it's because, like, she makes an effort to, like, stay in touch with people. And, like, if she hears that there's a family party, like, even if it's, like, not oh, nice. yet, it's, like, a you know, like, a second cousin or whatever. Like, she'll make an effort to go and, like, to oh, stay yeah, in yeah. touch. And it's, like, it's definitely yeah. a commitment, yeah. Yeah, but it's good. to. It's just... It just feels good, you know, and like to be back there and like to see cousins that I knew growing up and then now to see their kids and like some of their kids have kids, which is crazy because <laughs> it's like my yeah. generation of cousins now have kids with kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like it's, it's literally like seeing like the tree branch out and it's so cool. Yeah. 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 So oh, that's that's uh, yeah. That's in cool. The middle of- editing like it was good it like forced me to take a break because the work is just so nuts right now with the show I know. roots it's we just, just like... talked about that yeah you're like stuck in the editing cave huh yeah and it's like trying to keep the momentum because it's an eight episode series and we're only on episode three this week yep. <laughs> so trying to rally the team like okay we're almost halfway <laughs> but they've been working so hard so it's just one of those things it's like when you're leading a team, lifting them up and giving them the encouragement that they need to keep going. Cause like this kind of work is really, really hard. It's just Mm -hmm. all consuming. It's just all day, all night. We're getting, I'm getting emails and like revisions and uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more than I thought it would be, but you've done a show like this before. So, you know. Yeah. We've done a couple. I I definitely remember those nights, like just like late nights in this office. Like we, we, for deadline i mean you guys did eight you guys are doing eight episodes that's crazy we did like a one episode thing like you know a special feature and even that was tough but we had lots of footage and i remember like late nights like maurice and i were in this room kind of like taking turns editing like okay you nap for 30 minutes i'm gonna like cut <laughs> this little section then we'll switch i i noticed that you know because there's so many episodes there is a temptation to um to not hit the standard that you're you're oh, used yeah. to you know it's like there's a temptation to just be like okay good enough send it um and it's so it's really taking a lot to like fight that that temptation and be like all right let's just like do one more revision like one more round and like just tighten all this up because i think to us like our good enough to everybody else is great, you know, but I think in order to be great, you really need to keep it at the standard that you are that you want to put out there. And because there's so many, it's just, it's hard to keep it at that level. It's 100%. Been yeah, especially as a creative, right? I think we talked about this in a few episodes, where it's like, you hold yourself to a certain standard. And it's so mm-hmm. hard to like, just not just ignore that you know and just be like yeah that's good enough let's just submit it you know we're, we're tired we're stressed but uh there's a balance right it's like it's this is great this is good let's like let's end it and and not to burn yourself out too so it's 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 cool and you know if, if anyone's the person to navigate that it's you so it, it's been cool to see i mean i watched episode one that was great uh we talked to chef epi two weeks ago and that that was that was really cool to see like everyone's perspective and involvement in this project so if you guys have not watched it yet, watch it tonight. Or watch episode one, episode two, and then watch episode three. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. That's awesome. Oh, what, what's your biggest takeaway so far from this whole production? I feel like you're going to have to ask me that when we're all done and wrapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the thick of it right now. But I think um, just appreciating and really honoring the stories that we captured because that's ultimately what's like pushing me to keep going and to keep it at that level of excellence that we're wanting to because we're sharing their stories that are so important and it's almost like it's so sacred because they Mm -hmm. they 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 opened up and they trusted us with their story and we just want to give it the best we got so that we can frame them in the best light and so I think, and there's stories like that that we do 
like even just weddings i mean giving them the best that you have to honor their love story i think um it's easy to slip when you're doing so many weddings and do doing so many things it's it's not slip but then just to be okay like mm -hmm. yeah kind of just like yeah that's that was good enough yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but, but yeah then like i always tell people too like if you're in like a service industry wedding industry or like even just like telling stories like what we do mm -hmm. it's like they're trusting you they're 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 opening up to you they're being vulnerable they're welcoming you to their homes businesses all of that stuff and it's like i feel like you just got to do them justice you know like it's mm -hmm. it's, it's a, a level of respect and self-respect and also respect to your your, your story and, yeah and it's yeah. something that they would tre treasure and pass down to their kids. I had a couple reach out to me. They're celebrating their 10-year anniversary. Nice. And they're like, oh, can we um, cut, you know, a reel out of our wedding video that you shot for us 10 years ago? Yeah. Wow. And since then, they have had three kids and the kids watch your wedding video. So it's just a good reminder to be like, okay, they're going to, this is going to be something that they tre treasure for their whole life. And then- yeah passed down to their kids so it better be good <laughs> yeah they, i always tell be proud of it you know 100 percent. i always tell couples that too it's like I, I i'm super biased but i think like photos but especially video is like the best way to relive mm -hmm. your special day whether it's your wedding or birthday or whatever it is but it's like you, you know you get to see the visuals you you hear the audio and then all of that crafted into something that the company you hire creates for you you know you're gonna show that to your kids one day and like cherish it and i don't know it's it's just a crazy thought to think that you're putting so much work into this project that's gonna live on like forever it's gonna be timeless it's yeah. crazy even just capturing them at that time because yeah. you know, relationships evolve and then you get kids and you get busy and stuff but to look back on when it was like just the two of them and they're so in love and to hear that they watched on their anniversary every year it's it's pretty special I think. Yeah. Or when they post it. And I mean, when I went to social media, right? Like they're posting and tagging. Like, oh man, that was like two years ago. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I swear we're just like partying together. <laughs> See, you're already becoming the party friend, the wedding guest. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to do, I wanted to, I had this company idea before like the, the content creators came about, but I was like, I wanted to start PWG, which was professional wedding guests. Just invite <laughs> me. I'll show up. I'll create content on my phone, hang out start the party <laughs> there is a such thing as um like a social media curator at weddings now right where they yep. just go to sh to shoot like reels and stuff like that yeah like, well. so i saw it for the first time a few years ago at aj Raphael's wedding they flew someone from la because no one in hawaii oh. was doing it oh wow and like he was literally a professional wedding guest he just hung out he had such good energy he was there with could i film the wedding he was there with us like not in anybody's way, like hyping them up, creating TikToks and doing all the trends and everything. And I was yeah. like, that's crazy. What a freaking job. <laughs> like I'm over here, like, you know, with my, I mean, it's, it's a different, pods. yeah, it's a different deliverable for sure. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the main thing that we talk about, uh, you know, when hiring a, a wedding video company versus mm -hmm. a content creator, that's mm -hmm. like the difference, right? Like the deliverables are different and the expectations are different, but like, mm -hmm. it's so crazy. You know, the instant gratification, they film throughout the day, eight hours, 10 hours, whatever it is, upload everything to Dropbox and you get it the next day. Yeah. And that that's wow. cool too, because you don't have to worry about you being on your phone or you don't have to worry about getting stuff from your guests. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm like, how are these people like doing all this on their wedding day? You know, yeah. like, those wedding trends. But yeah, yeah. if you have somebody dedicated to just shooting that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like it was. I had a wedding where it was like in the timeline, like boom, like thirty minutes to film TikTok. You know, I was like, hmm. nice, nice. So I just filmed like the BTS of the TikTok, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, dang, that's crazy. Like, what a life we live in right now. Totally. Well, last at last night's wedding, so the bride's father passed away. Oh shucks. Recently. And uh, yeah, recently. So instead of a, so they did the mother son dance, and then it was a surprise for uh, the father daughter dance. They had a screen and they played videos. Oh of, my god! I'm getting chicken skin wrap. They're getting. They're playing video. They're playing videos of her dancing with her dad at other weddings, <gasps> like from Stop. a baby. Oh, I was cry I was like filming and crying. I was like thinking about Emery, and I was like, oh my gosh! Like I need to look away from the screen. Like they were dancing. Like she's obviously young, and then like 
a little bit older. I think they were going to a lot of weddings, like family weddings. And like, so they always collected footage of her with her oh dad dancing. Gosh, oh my gosh. I was so sobbing. Everyone sweet. was crying. I was like, I'm, I'm getting chicken skin thinking about it. But I was like, oh my goodness. Oh but my yeah, it's just moments like that, you know? It's like video yeah. captured that. And that video was probably from like 20 years ago. Oh my gosh. I can only imagine everybody just bawling. Yeah, that. right. Oh I, I saw that first. I was crying. I looked at her. I was like, oh my gosh, she's crying. I looked at the mom. She's bawling. Oh, oh man, her auntie. I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I, I got to keep it together. I got to keep everything in focus. I got to keep steady. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good idea, though. That's such... I love to see how people, um, like, honor their, like... Uh, yeah people who have passed because there's so many so many ways that you, you can do it and that we see it at weddings and it's so special so speaking on weddings has has wedding filmmaking and editing like prepared you for anything i mean like i guess like the show that you're doing now right the pressure oh my gosh no weddings weddings is definitely the best training ground for like any yeah. kind of filmmaking and we we talk about it too because when you're shooting a wedding you need to be you need to be able to move quickly. You need to be able to get it when the moment happens and not count on doing it again. You know, so all that preparation that goes into filming weddings that is so valuable when it comes to filming anything else. Like I'm sure you know when it comes to commercials, like what would take a diff another studio like a couple of days to do this? Like we can get it done in like half a day. Mm -hmm, <laughs> like mm -hmm. we know how to do it. Things work quickly and efficiently and yeah. get it right the first time so it is definitely i tell everybody honestly anybody who's getting into filmmaking i always tell them you should shoot weddings because it's yeah. really good practice um to be able to like know your camera know your settings know a flow of a run a run of show like how how to always be prepared for the next thing um yeah, you always have to be like 10 steps ahead. Yeah, wedding days happen quickly and you need to capture everything. But then also you need to remember like slow down and make sure all your gear is good. You know, like, mm -hmm. are you recording? Are you, uh, everything all good? So it's just like you're activating so many parts of your brain. And mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely, I, I owe it to the wedding industry for like the filmmaker that I am today because mm -hmm. like all the foundation and like the pressure and everything. But not just that, like, you need to keep the vibes high, right? Yeah, you yeah, exactly. Like you can't just be focused. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you need to be aware of, like, your subject or your couple, yeah. like, making sure that they feel good, that they're happy, that that they're not like, oh, man, like, hurry up already. So many things are happening at one time. And after a wedding, you're just, like, dead. <laughs> dead. Yeah. Just, like, melt to the bed. Like, don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I know a lot of people don't realize that. And I think, uh, we, we talked about this in like a, another mastermind or something, but it was like as a filmmaker, anyone behind the camera as crew, you're like, you really set the vibe, right? If you're you're angry that day at your equipment or whatever, they're going to get that vibe. They're going to feel angry. If you're like serious, they're going to be serious. If you're like joking all day, they're going to be funny and joking. So it's just kind of like you really set the vibe. You're mm -hmm. with them all day. And it's so important to just like create a good experience. And honestly, that's what they're going to remember, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Andrew was so much fun to be around. Like, I want him to just be my friend and be around all the time and shoot all of my events. So, yeah. Shout out to Maya, Angelo. I've yes. learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's honestly, <laughs> even Peter, my husband, will be like, that is honestly in the beginning because you weren't that great at shooting. But people, like, I knew how to make people happy and, like, to make yeah. them feel comfortable. And so they'll look back at their wedding video and it might not be the best. <laughs> but then they'll be like, oh, we love Kobe, you know? So Yeah, yeah. No, I, I tell people that too because, yeah, we work with, we get to work with so many vendors and companies and whatnot. And it's like, at the end of the day, you're in the service industry mm -hmm. and you're here to service this couple that hired you, their friends, their family, their guests, all these special people that they're flying in or whatever it is, right? Celebrating with. And it's like, you can create the best product Mm -hmm. soup the most epic film photos whatever but it's like if they had a bad experience that day they're gonna remember that they'd be like shit man like why did i have to walk through all those rocks like to get that photo <laughs> or like i, I know. don't know i stacked yeah. my dress on these rocks for that you know like cool yeah and they're when they get the final product even if it's so amazing like they'll yeah. still have like the sour taste and be like eh, it's okay like the, the expectation is like yeah so higher, i feel like yeah 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 um no that's I a good that. That whole thing is like such an amazing like lesson to be learned because it's like sometimes you're right. Like you're out there shooting 
you're tired, you're exhausted, you're hot, like yeah. maybe your equipment's breaking down and maybe your team is like irritated, but yeah, you had to put on that, put on yeah. that like good vibe energy. It's pretty fascinating, honestly, the world of wedding videography, um, because yeah. there are wedding vi videographers out there who are like luxury, high end destination wedding videographers that travel around the world and yeah, they're charging like a hundred k. I'm like, bro, hundred thousand dollars on a wedding, fifty to hundred. I'm like, shoosh. Yeah, it's like that's a whole nother micro industry. That yeah. It's just, it's so interesting to me. Like, they're only shooting in the most glamorous, beautiful places in the world, like Lake Como or yeah, yeah. Um, Paris. See, but then, like, even like that seems like, I, I don't know if, like, that's worth the pressure and the expectations. So pressure. Yeah. And I wonder yeah. what the interaction is like between the filmmaker and the couple, you know? Because it's like, usually you would think, I mean, obviously, they're going to have a lot of money or celebrity status where there's rules and, like, I don't know. Yeah, we. I was kind of looking it up too, and like I was talking to my team, like Shanika, and like I was like, it's crazy because it's like, it's like a PR day, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you have to be here. There's a photographer that's probably like, you know, imagine like you shooting next to a photographer that charges a hundred k. I'll be like, bro, mm -hmm. you can do your shots. Like, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> and then like that specific wedding, uh, CMC and Olivia Cooper, uh, I guess like Vogue bought out the rights to the wedding. Mm. so no one was allowed to post or anything until vogue posted and mm. then vogue also brought their own photo video team so i was like i can't imagine like filming with like 10 people around you you know yeah no i don't I'd be so yeah I don't, I, I don't know i, I don't know Frank, maybe 100k i'll do it <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, if i ever book a 100k wedding i won't tell anyone but you'll see you'll see the signs <laughs> just kidding <laughs> and she's not a part of this podcast anymore <laughs> <laughs> and you <she> quit. <laughs> uh I am in Italy right now. Uh but yeah, no, I I I at then like I, I really owe it to like the wedding industry and like mentors sure. like you that like led the wedding like built this wedding industry and to what it is and you know, you gave me the opportunity and I don't know. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you. All right. That was um, a good episode. This week we have a new episode featuring Flash Hansen. Yep. So Andrew and Flash go is... back, way back. <laughs> yeah. So I met him Republic Days. He was like the director of marketing at Republic. And, you know, we did a lot of shows together. We he really gave us like him and you know the team there gave us opportunity to create like the social media recaps when Instagram was only doing seven seconds. Uh, because I was like Vine and everything too. So I was like, okay, so how can we tell a story in seven seconds? And then 15 seconds, we're like, oh, 15 seconds, let's go. And then 30 oh, seconds. Wow. And then, this you know, now to a long it. time ago. Yeah, yeah. And then I think what we were known for too was we were pumping it out like that night. Because, you know, again, wedding yeah, industry yeah. trained us for like same day edits and that pressure. We would film the event, pump it out that night, post it the next morning, and people were like, whoa, I was there. And, you know, it just blow up and like create better promotions and whatnot. So that's cool. That's where I met Flash. Um, and we just stayed in touch. And now he's a director of promotions and marketing at iHeartRadio. So he handles a lot now. I loved his stories because he talks about a yeah. time that doesn't exist, exist anymore. Like, he's been in the industry for a while. So, like, yeah, we talked a lot about, like, different eras he went through. Yeah. He was a promoter and he did a bunch of cool things. Yeah. I hear about this from, like, our music friends, how... Um, now with social media, it's just different because everybody's on their phone filming the concert or whatever, the club on their phone and not super present. So it's almost like it's just a different vibe. It's like mm -hmm. instead of just being there, enjoying the music, enjoying the vibes, enjoying the club, now they're enjoying it through their phone. Yeah, yeah. I see we talk it too, like people posting from concerts, like the whole concert on yeah. their story. Yeah, we, we talked about that in the episode and it's mm -hmm. like it's just like subconsciously, I think, you know, like people are just like, boom, I gotta like be on my phone, or whatever. But yeah. it's like yeah, it's nice to be present in the moment and yeah. enjoy the people that you're there with, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, totally. So yeah, tune in for that. And we ha are working on some other episodes that we're excited to talk about. So stay tuned. We have been pretty busy, so we've been kind of slacking on posting new episodes, but But look at us, busy. we're still doing it. We're still doing yeah. it. Yeah. Making time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for keeping up with us, watching all the new episodes, um, sharing them. And yeah, we really appreciate you guys as always.
yeah, thank you for the support. We really appreciate it. And you know, you guys are the reason why we're doing this. Yep. You know, we want to share these stories and connect and, and whatnot. So yeah, feel free to reach out and we'd love to talk story. Cool. Talk to you guys next time. Have a great week, everyone.